Hey, Michelle. Hey, how's it going? It's not bad. How are you doing? Thanks for doing this. You all right? Yeah, I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Thank you for having me. Good, good, good. And we're going to be talking about marketing skills because, like, I know I speak to a, quite a few marketers who come straight out of university and they head into the a digital marketing agency and university hasn't really prepared them. Do you find that? Yes. Yes, I do. And I actually have a master's degree in internet marketing specifically, and I still was not prepared when I got into uh, the real world of things. It moves so quickly, doesn't it? And there's so many new... Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll chat yes, a little yes. bit about this. Uh, I'll tell you what, uh, to start off, I'll give you 30 seconds. Tell us who you are, what you do, uh, about starting about now. Go for it. Okay. So uh, uh, it was a cold Thursday, 1988. And no, I'm, I'm not, not going to start that far. Uh, basically, long long story short, I, I am a, a, a data scientist with a very, very, very heavy marketing background. Um, I started my professional career as a marketer. As I just said, I have a master's degree in internet marketing. From there, I, I got data science certifications. I do a lot of tagging. So people would say uh, like the, the the Google Tag Manager and stuff like that. So I make sure that the front end data gets to the people so that they know that their marketing campaigns are working. So when you don't have the numbers, it's probably my fault a little bit or you just didn't tell me. And I'm, I'm actually transitioning into more of an AI-focused uh, career path. Uh, so it's like data science, AI, marketing. We'll, 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 we'll see where this plane lands yeah. whenever I get to where I'm going. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Well, loads of things to take out of that. One, I, you can't remember. You surely can't remember 1988. I mean, there's no chance there. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, mean I, I was there for a few months. I was there for a few months. <laughs> Oh, I was there for more than a few months, I'm afraid. Uh, we'll talk about data a little bit later, because I think this is something where the modern marketer needs to kind of get their head around this a little bit. But I mean, the Google Tag Manager, you must be the only person who likes Google Tag Manager, I think. I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, the data has to get from somewhere to somewhere else. And it, it could be Tag Manager, it could be Adobe Launch, it could be some off-brand thing you found on AppSumo. It doesn't matter. At the end of the day, <laughs> um, the button on the website needs to be recorded so that data yeah. is sent back to the marketer. So yeah. whatever the tool is, it doesn't really matter to me. Yeah, yeah. That's a good good attitude to have. Otherwise, you would just hate Google Tag Manager like me. So, <laughs> so if you had if you had to pick one skill, one kind of thing mm -hmm. that a marketer needs to learn this year, 2024, what what would you say it is? Patience. Mm. Patience. So, it, so it's it's not necessarily oh, you really need to learn Facebook ads. You really need to learn TikTok ads, right? It's not that it, it it's patience. It's it's the understanding that things change. You need to be able to change with them, and you need to be able to see your re, your results through. I, I think that is a big one. I have several other ones that I won't touch on because it's going to be too much, and everyone's head is going to explode. <laughs> but but I think I think patience in twenty twenty four is going to be key. Uh, Marketing budgets are going to be tried because ad, 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 ad spend is going to be so high because of the election and because of a few other just things going on U.S. wise. I'm very U.S. focused. I apologize to your to your overseas audience That's okay. there, but but uh, any Eng any major English speaking market, uh, everything's so much more expensive. So uh, patience. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then with, with, with your own patients, you need to set those those patient expectations to the higher ups and to the clients and everybody else yeah. so that they also understand that you are educated in this in a space. But things might not be 10x like they were five, six, seven, eight years ago. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I really like that. I wasn't expecting you to say patience. And I really I'm full like of surprises. that. Yeah. Well, do, do, do you think we move too quickly? Do you think we try and move too quickly? Do you think we just keep keep thinking we've just got to keep churning and churning and churning and churning constantly and move I, as fast as we can? I definitely think, especially with the introduction of AI, which I'm pretty sure we'll wind up talking about mm. later, that that there is a, a pressure for, for, for productivity. A lot of this pressure is false pressure. 
It's not because the consumers are doing something or, or this is doing something. It's because a CEO had entirely too much time at home and he was looking at Forbes.com and he got an idea. And it's your job to execute <laughs> on, oh, well, I saw this on MSNBC. So we need to do this company that's not equipped in any way, shape, or form to do this thing. But, you know, uh, that, that uh, that's part of the job. That, uh, that's part of pulling it pulling it off. Uh, I've been yeah. doing uh, digital, digital marketing since 2011. I got in when the Google Panda update came in. Uh, yeah. kinda killed, it it kind of killed SEO as we knew it. And, and that was a big shifting and turning point for a lot of, I don't want to call them agencies, but that's what they call themselves because <laughs> because they, they have like micro sites and like everything else. But, you know, it's, it's just like always being able to pivot and being OK with not being right in that moment. Yeah. You know, it's just like that. That, yeah. that is the yeah. job, you know. Yeah. Marketing used to many, many years ago be a lot about experimentation and we were allowed time to experiment. You got given a budget or a certain amount of your budget would be set aside mm -hmm. for experimenting. And then and you had a whole things. quarter, a whole year, a yeah. whole whatever. And now exactly. it's like you, 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 you have three days. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. And you can't prove anything really in three days. Can you, you can't prove a thing? So you, can you can try. You can try. We'll probably talk about that later because you know way more about <laughs> data than me. So, so let's talk about AI. Do, do you think we're going to have to get better at prompting the AI? Yeah, of course. I, I, I was talking to a friend who's not in this space at all and has no idea what I'm talking about ever. But she smiles and she nods and it makes me feel great. Hmm. So I was saying how prompt engineering in the next five, 10 years is going to be what Microsoft Excel and like Microsoft Word was, let's say, uh, late 90s or, or early 2000s. So if you had, I know how to use Microsoft Word on your resume, you were just the bee's knees and everybody yeah. wanted you and, you know, you were great. And I think that what prompt engineering is going to be, whether it's a uh, mid journey or sorry, whether it's a uh, image based uh, prompt engineering or or straight chat GPT or whatever large language model you want to use. Uh, I, I am one of those people always doing courses, always doing random programs. I have a fake PhD. I'm not getting into that story right now. <laughs> um, so so it, it's, just, it's just one of those things where it's like, for me, prompt engineering and, 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 and AI are going to be my next set of certifications. And I'm currently in a class right now. Like I just started it yesterday. Don't think too highly of me, <laughs> uh, where like, I, it's called prompt engineering for artificial, prompt engineering, comma, artificial intelligence for data science or something like that. So like, that's what I'm doing to kind of be able to just learn about it. I don't really care about the resume thing, but just kind of like yeah. learn about it and just, just to kind of stay within the conversation. Yeah. Do you think the AI will help us kind of crunch the numbers a little bit quicker? Uh, and maybe not quicker, but maybe maybe we can ask it, ask the AI better questions and it can look at the data and give us better answers. Would, would that be fair? That would be the key, right? Hmm. But I, I honestly and truly wholeheartedly believe <laughs> that, 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 that for the very majority of people when it comes to AI... It's going to be like spell check or like mm. autocorrect on your, on your phone to the point where now no one knows how to spell. Yeah. Like I never knew yeah. how to spell, but now no one knows how to spell, yeah. right? Yeah. I, I, I think that that is honestly and truly what AI is going to be. It's very hot take controversial, but that is what it's going to be. The more it's inside of the phones, the more it's inside of your browser natively. Because um, people today in, in my particular field, the data science field, that's all about asking questions. You got, you can yeah. do a five question, you know what I mean? Yeah. And working with, especially newer marketers, no shade. That group of people never learned how to properly ask questions. Yes. Because a lot of them just left a state of being where they were just simply regurgitating information and, and, and doing book reports to be completely yeah. honest. Yeah. But learning how to ask the question of, what is this person who came to this site truly looking for? Yeah. And then asking four deeper questions and then getting the numbers to see what is going on as a baseline. Yeah. 
And then, <laughs> you know, learning what levers to pull to change yeah. those numbers in the right direction. Yeah. That That is the process that's never really taught. And that process is what separates a good marketer from a great marketer. Yeah. And it's when you've got that data, when you've got those results, when you've got that information, mm-hmm. it's knowing what to do then to improve mm-hmm. you that pull data the, and the next time around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and I then like and that. then and then from there, and a lot of people overcomplicate this whole process of, oh well, you're doing this YouTube ad, and you're doing this, and you're doing that, and you're doing a uh, native, and you're doing uh, TikTok, and this and blah blah blah. It's like really once you understand your audience, once you understand your offer, once you understand how your website works and functions, you can create what I call r- recipes, right? Yeah. So it's like for this particular type of campaign. Here's the foundation. Now, I don't, you know, rest on that foundation, but here's a good starting point. I know that we're going to need at least six ads to kind of A-B test over here. I I, I know that this market over here likes this. So it, it, it comes in the foundation. So the setup is where AI can come in at to say, okay, here, here's what I need. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah. AI, yeah, yeah. do this. Then once I start getting the numbers and the data and I start asking questions and I see some anomalies and some outliers or the money's not quite right, then that's where me as the human (laughs) can start to actually do the human based things. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to ask you about fragmentation in marketing now, because because like I think marketing is becoming more fragmented, fragmented, that there's less of the kind of like the all in one marketer around, because I don't think you Mm -hmm. can really do that to a very high level anymore, because there is there's so much. I mean, don't talk to me about spreadsheets and data. I'll leave that to you. Do you know what I mean? But I mean, I mean, I'll I'll create scripts and I'll create, you know, artwork and things like that all day long. No problem, because that's the part Mm -hmm. I'm reasonably good at so do you see Mm -hmm. marketing becoming more fragmented do you things like data science be going to the data science person ai going to the ai prompt guy that sort of thing i think it is becoming more fragmented i don't think that it should be that way though right you think we can all learn a little bit of everything yes so i think that there should be the specialties so you writing copy and, you know, make, 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 making images and the, the actual ads itself, that is key. That, 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 that is f- formidable. But there either has to be a, a knowledge within the, yourself or, or, or a strategist or someone that's kind of over the, the umbrella of people to say, well, the data says this. I need you to make it look like this. Hmm. So, so, so there still has to be some sort of connection to this PPC camp for this, this pay-per-click campaign, I'm not going to abbreviate. So, mm-hmm. so, so the, this pay-per-click campaign is bringing in this type of traffic. How are returning visitors going to then affect a- a- SEO, right? So how, how, how is this for the customer lifetime value? So that that's another business me- metric affecting yeah. everything. So, so even though you have your own area, your own lane, I think it's key to have an understanding of the whole picture so that you can execute at the highest, you know, level possible. Yeah, I um, I see where you're going. It's a little bit like, I suppose, I've always found, because I work a lot with web developers, and I've always mm -hmm. found the web developers who understand the people and the... Uh, the marketing side of it, I suppose, mm-hmm. the psychology side of what a user wants, yep. the user behavior, the, the UX, the UI, that sort of thing. That sort of developer tends to tends to build a better product than, say, somebody who yep. literally just codes and uh, does yep. nothing else but code. Well, that, is that what you're kind of saying? Exactly. No, that that, that that is exactly what I'm saying. So, for your example, the, the developer who knows marketing... Hmm is a way better developer than someone who has all these scroll bars and all these pretty pictures and all these color gradients and everything else. But like the, the, the basic plain developer that people are like, Oh, this is so basic, blah, blah, blah. They, it is basic because your, 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 your customers go from one website to another website. And if your website is so different and so difficult to get through nine times out of 10, they're not going to buy anything. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And so 
that developer who understands marketing and and, and conversion rates and, and everything else, they're they're going to make you a better landing page so that you yeah. save money ultimately on 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 ads. To be completely yeah. honest, yeah, absolutely. So you see a role for like an a well-rounded all-in-one marketer who kind of maybe just specializes in something rather than somebody who just specializes in something. Yes, exactly. The the the, the old idiom, and I don't know if you guys have it over there across the pond, mm. but uh, people love to say, jack of all trades, master of none, you know? And like, we and like, we and say like, that and as like, well. And like they, they, they kind of say it in like a bad way, right? Yeah. But the whole thing is jack of all trades, master of none is always better than a master of one. That is yeah. the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. But pretty much for the vast majority of my life, I only heard, well, jack, jack of all trades, master of none. And they, they say it in such yeah. a bad way. But it's like, no, you're actually giving me a compliment. Stop it. Yeah, <laughs> Stop. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so if you were talking to a young marketer right now, you would say, get a grounding, get a good grounding, understand the whole mm-hmm. kind of like digital marketing process from managing budgets to uh, the whole, the whole nine yards of it. But also maybe look at specializing in maybe AI prompting or, or data or something mm-hmm. like something like that. Would that be, be it? What I would tell a brand new marketer, and this is terrible advice, don't listen to me. Don't uh, do it. I, <laughs> it's terrible advice. <laughs> Become a lawyer. Um, that's where all the money is. <laughs> no, that's the AI is definitely killing that industry. Yes. I would tell a young marketer to go start a business. Mm. It, to start any business. That doesn't matter what it is. Take, so you went to school, you paid $50,000, whatever. Take $5,000, start a business mm. so that you understand what your role is from beginning to end. So that you understand how this SEO plays into this PPC campaign that plays into this and influence marketing campaign so that you can actually sit on sales calls from people trying to sell you stuff so that you can hear what they're trying to sell, how they're trying to sell it. And then and then you you can see how their products work. Right. Yeah. And I'm not saying spend money with, with these vendors, but yeah. but but start a business. Go get a, a LLC from whatever your governing body is and see how you sell yourself and how you market yourself number one Hmm. well whether it's consulting or whatever it doesn't matter just for six months to a year so Hmm. you already did the four years five years six years i don't know your life i'm not your mom and and just spend six months to a year on the side it don't gotta be a, a nine to five type thing um just just see what you are made out of and see yeah. how hard it really is. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You you can learn a lot by doing, can't you? Mm-hmm. And 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 at, and at, at the end of the day, and, and if you don't have five thousand dollars, that's fine. But just yeah, try to do something. Go on yeah. Upwork. Go on. Go on whatever uh, freelancing site you have. Yeah. See see what it takes to build a good portfolio. So that people will actually look at you because at the end of the day, if you're trying to work for a major company or what have you, they're, they're going to look, look for the same things. Yeah. So this is just your your six month to a year practice ground of I'm a good marketer. Now I'm going to be a great marketer. Yeah. Yeah. I like that idea. When I've spoken to web developers in the past, I've kind of like said, make sure your own website is absolutely brilliant, but not brilliant in the sense that it shows off but is in the Mm -mm. sense that it converts. So that does your Mm -hmm. website actually, you know, does it rank well in Google for a Mm -hmm. start? Does it then convert well? You know, are you answering all the questions and all the pain points of the person coming coming Mm -hmm. to your website and and doing that? And I think if you learn that, then you get a you get a better idea on on what you're going to be building in the future. Mm hmm. Same advice, same advice. But again, yeah. that's terrible advice, guys. Don't do that. But <laughs> but but if you want to be great, um, that that is a very quick way on how, how to how to become great. Yeah, cool, nice one, Michelle. It's been fascinating chat with you. So we've all got to learn data science. Oh, God, I've got to learn data. <laughs> I can do the AI prompting because that's a little bit more fun. To be fair, 
Yes, yes, it is. Yeah. And there, there's there's some things like prompt based as well now. Mm-hmm. So if you're just stuck on something and you're just like, I don't know what I'm doing, just go on prompt base. And, and there's another marketplace I can't think of right now, but they're, they're just they're starting to pop up now when you just don't know what to do or what to say. <laughs> I'll have to start asking the AI for for the prompt for the AI. It, it will yeah. give you a pretty good yeah. good prompt. It will give you a pretty good prompt. Oh. Yeah. Michelle, thank you for your time. Where can we find you? Where's your website, social media bits? Just find me on LinkedIn. I'm always doing something crazy and wonky. But 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 LinkedIn, I'm always happy to chat. Again, I'm, I, I have a plethora of interests and activities, marketing, data science, currently making a rug. So if you're into rug tufting, that's cool. My daughter uh, did one yeah, of those. Yeah. My daughter did a big, big, big round tufty rug. Like a couple of years. Yeah, have have like a little uh tufting gun, and I'm doing mm. this picture, and I traced it, and all. So I'm, I'm I'm just having a good time. Uh, I have random day trading, random things that I'm into. Uh, so, uh, yeah, if you just want to chat, just uh, find me on LinkedIn, and I'll share the link with you, and uh, it, it I'll I'll be there. <laughs> Fantastic. What I'll do, I'll leave a link in the show notes, and folks can give it a tap or a click or whatever yeah. the, whatever yeah. they want. Fantastic. Michelle, thanks ever so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Again, thank you for having me.